What up, guys? Uh, sorry I haven't done a video in a while. I've been preoccupied with school a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna try to bring a quick popper video. I uh, just got done with an accounting test, and I need to start getting ready for physics. Okay, so go to the game. Yeah, so uh, I've been playing a lot of Paper Magic here recently. Uh, it's just been easier, to be honest. I recently bought my Goy switcher over there on the floor. And this is keepable. Doesn't have. Cool, we won. Um, so we concede match. So we recently. I'm just gonna keep going. Since I recently bought these Goyfs, unfortunately they're not all the same art, but. They're pretty dope, if I do say so myself. Seeing as these are like the first ones that I've played with in a long while. Or the first ones I've owned ever. So, I'm also working on buying like tokens and stuff like that. So that match started, but just want to show these off real quick. So I got 2-2, two and two, which is better than like a 3-1 and one or any of that stuff. Um... I just sold the card that I've been speculating on, which was Seed Rhino. I sold 100 copies of that for about $650. I made about $250 on that whole transaction. And let's take it back to the game. Let's see. There we go. Alright, so this hand's alright. It's keepable. Um, it needs white, but as long as we're not playing it, something that. You know, has a bunch of sac effects, I think we can win easy. Yeah, so I'm ordering tokens too, because I, I mean, like, I got that $650 from the Rhinos, and I need, I'm switching the, the Goyfs, it's an Abzan, I'm switching that to green black with obliterators, and I need to buy Marsh Flats for it, because I forgot to get those a while ago. So I'm going to buy those, and I'm going to buy tokens and it should cost me only like six hundred dollars it won't be too bad yeah so I'm playing uh, auras obviously and I kinda was just you know I felt like giving you guys a small update let you know that I would not fallen off the face of the planet and I just wanted to play a deck that is really easy because all your choices are just de dedicated by like the cards in your hand. You don't have to worry about your opponent too much. Like if you have sac effects, I lose. I have to play more creatures. Or I lose game one, I just go post board. But if not, I just steamroll them. Um, excuse me. I was thinking about putting together boggles in modern because they both cost like tokens and boggles cost like. 500 bucks respectively around there I think if you play bitter blossoms your tokens deck can cost like 600 bucks Ooh, wow triple hand core this is gonna be pretty cool I'm expecting mana leak here which is fine oh he's gonna brainstorm that's interesting I guess you could have an edict like a cruel edict or no innocent blood, that's a sorcery. Edict would be instant speed, but he didn't do another one. Uh, we should be fine in this matchup. He probably doesn't play, like unless he's playing trinkets, which could be possible. He did fetch for a black source, so he probably had black source, blue source, and probably a, maybe another swamp in his hand. <sighs> yeah, so we're gonna shoot this guy up with a Enchantment that can't die, pretty much. And we're gonna start beating his face hole in. So yeah, I was gonna buy boggles, or I was gonna buy... Tokens, I decided on tokens, because I think beating the fair decks, and being able to, like, invest in, like, an actual deck. Like, I couldn't buy all of Twin, because just for Tarns, Twins, and Snapcaster Mages, it costs, like, 500 bucks. Trainer's Edict, that's fine. Um, so you know that's that. 
it kind of sucks, but I don't really want to sell a bunch of cards right now, and I think tokens has a lot of play to it, so I'm going to be working on that. Hey, we are playing against trinkets. That's kind of cool. I like this deck. Probably lose, but I like this deck. They don't have a lot of... Uh, they have a lot of sac effects, but they don't have a lot of things other than that. So they, I, I should be expecting eight sac effects in the main, zero counter spells, approximately, because you'd have two trainer edicts and four Gath verdicts. Ooh, curse. Okay, maybe this is just blue black control. Okay, there's the planes I needed. I can play that. And then I can play my Heliod's Pilgrim. Call that good. <laughs> so yeah, I was gonna, like, buying Boggles or Tokens are both Tier 2, I think. Uh, Boggles is also a good investment because you get Horizon Canopies and stuff but I don't see myself playing like Maverick and stuff in Legacy I'd see myself playing uh, Ant Esper Deathblade and Shardless Bug so like anything that's like a black white fetch land would be decent to be able to invest in and just, you know, just kind of thinking towards the future. Also, the, like, stuff that's not going to decrease in value, like, buying, uh, what is it? Like, four more Thought Seizes. That put me up to 12, because I play Blue-Black Control, I play Abzan, and those both have four. So, yeah, they give me 12 Thought Seizes, which is a solid investment, because they can go back up to $70 a piece, like, before Lore win, or before they were reprinted in Theros. <clears throat> I think here yeah, I grab another Eth Eth or I grab a ethereal armor I have a hyena umbra I kind of think I want the white source but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to run hyena umbra you can't see what I'm pointing to so I don't know why I'm pointing at the screen put hyena umbra on the pilgrim and rancor up my glade cover scouts or even just a snake umbra Onto, onto it so I get a hit for a decent amount of damage. <coughs> Excuse me. But yeah, with Boggles, the thing is, is like there's no Boggles deck in Legacy, and I won't play Maverick, so there's no reason to invest in any like Windswept Heath, Horizon Canopy um, type lands. Um. So I just think it's it's going to be better to buy, like, this would give me, because I'd have to buy six, I believe six copies of Marsh Flats. You could have no single guess rating, not double. So yeah, this would be the correct line. You'd Snake Umbra, so you need to draw a card. You can Victim it in response. And now he can't play guess rating, so okay. So then that was a straight up two for one on my part and then I get an attack and I'll count the two damage worth a card and I'll count drawing a card worth a card so it'd come out as a one for one it's still technically two for one but you know whatever one two three four five six oh, I needed to yield to that always yes yeah, always yield it's probably not gonna live for long but if it does um, so yeah, like Daybreak Cornets, if Modern ever, like, doesn't become a format, you know, like, they drop it off, I don't think they will, they're trying really hard to push it, but if it ever does, my investment's gonna be safer with, like, Bitter Blossoms and stuff, versus, I don't, any, anything else, like, yeah, everything that's in Boggles is pretty much, like, 
only good because it's a deck in modern. Like Bitter Blossoms, Thought Seizes, Inquisitions are all played. Well, Inquisitions not really played in Legacy. I guess Duress is more played than that in Cabal Therapy. Um, but like the cards that are worth like 20, 30 bucks a piece or Bitters are 40 or 50, they're going to hold their value at least because they're going to stay as a as a reliable staple in legacy still I think here I get abundant growth and I try to draw another creature cause I could draw land that wouldn't be bad actually I grab another ethereal armor cause that means he has to kill my dude and he wouldn't have the mana for Channer's Edict and next turn I could bash him for 11 yeah so he can blow this guy up and then like, he'd have to have another Channer's Edict in his hand which is very possible he has drawn quite a few cards he's looking for it cause he knows that's his only line So if he has it, he probably wins. Like, this is really the fundamental turn of this game. Because next turn I could bash in for a ton. <laughs> he has triple black. Forgot about that card. Okay. Next game. This is a pretty rough matchup, but I'm not too worried about it. So, get rid of stuff like Hyena Umbra is going to be not so hot. Uh, Snake Umbras are going to be good. There's no reason to have Armadillo Cloak, so there's no reason to not have them. I could bring in lone missionaries and cut an Ilya's presence. Or I mean I could cut snake umbras. Because the umbras aren't really needed. In this matchup I want big like I could just kinda wanna turn into like a weenie type type deck with Rancors. That can, you know, try to grind the game out. So I think bring actually bring these in and cut these. Or maybe leave one in so I have a tutor target just because it does draw cards which is relevant in this matchup because <sighs> he's going to probably side in more yeah I just want more creatures I think that's a solid strategy overload his removal because he probably sides out spot removal and brings in sac effects uh, keep this nine times Oh, he probably brings in Dress too, so he gets to take Ethereal Armor here, because I'm probably going to play Abundant Growth turn 1. Actually, yeah. I could curve out Young Wolf into Ledwalker, into Boggle plus Abundant Growth. I think that might be a smart, smarter way to do this. I don't like brainstorming popper. I like ponder and I like preordain. Because you can get brainstorm locked really easily. So I could have went boggle into abundant growth, but I want to be able to. Since I drew a white source, if I drew an, even if I drew another green source, I want to be able to, you know, represent boggle abundant growth at real armor and then hit for a bunch. Being on the draw next turn or next game is really gonna bite me though. <laughs> I 
I wish I had a whiteboard. Shrivel, that's kind of cool. I didn't think he'd bring that in. I didn't know he even played that card. I should probably say that. So, now I get to go Boggle. Actually, Abundant Growth. It's not misplay here. I can play Nylea's Presence to what I think going Boggle for green. Because if he's playing Shrivel, I want to play around another one and then Ethereal Armor here. Now I get a Bastion for two. And next turn I get a Bastion for five. Actually, I get a Bastion for six. Because I'll play Nylea's Presence Boggle next turn. Hopefully draw a land, play Nylea's Presence, get another Ethereal Armor, and I can bash in for a ton. <laughs> I haven't done this in a while. I'm actually kind of excited that it, to record vid a video again. I need to do it more often, but I've been slacking. I think in this situation... We sack the young wolf. Well, I mean, yeah, that's not even a, a toss up. Like, Boggle's gonna deal more damage, plus, it's not a bad draw either. So we can loan missionary, or we can at least presence and Boggle. Um, undo, we tap this. We would, yeah, because it, it wouldn't matter either way. As long as we have one of these untapped. Because they're both untapped for five colors. So now we can follow up with a... It doesn't matter which one. I don't think there's one that's like sacrifice, monocolor, sacrifice, single color. <laughs> I just said the same thing twice. Sacrifice, multicolor, or sacrifice, monocolor. The multicolored you announce the guilds and that's a rare, so I can see him printing sack multicolored creature effect. <coughs> Shrivel. And then he has to have land and kill my dude. Oh no, yeah, innocent blood. That's the card I was talking about. Those things are like four tickets apiece, so he's probably a very dedicated very dedicated player of popper I couldn't think of what I was trying to say Seven. You got me. Don't need this one. <laughs> Man, if Become Immense was a common, God, it'd be so good. Okay, so here I actually get a bash for a bunch of damage. Because I'll get. Um. Ethereal armor. I'll equip it, and then I'll have a 4-4, four, four, so I get a bash for 6. And if he doesn't have another removal spell, I win next turn. Which seems very unlikely, because that deck is literally like, removal spells, draw spells, and mill spells. Like, this one's not bought, um, trinkets. It's like blue-black control. I don't know why he picked mill. I can see playing like, 4 curses, and that's it, but I don't know why you'd play like, mind sculpts and stuff. Oh yeah, first strike damage. I was like, wait, he's at 9? Did I miscount? Nope. So I might be able to win this game. I thought I was going to get 2 owed. It's like, hey, welcome back. Get 2 owed. Wish I had, like, mono green stompy. 
So he's looking for, I guess, a sack effect. I guess Chainer's Edict. I mean, he could have, he could have Innocent Blood sack effect. That would have been pretty good. And then he gets to take four. And if I draw an enchantment, I literally think if I draw any enchantment, I win. If he had double sack effect, but he doesn't, so I think I just win. Anyways, especially that. <coughs> so you'd have to play an effect on the stack. <laughs> he could have... I don't know what he could have. I don't know what to play around. I don't think I play around anything. I think I get Rancor there because it doesn't matter. And just in case he has an out. It would probably have been better. Because it's also better for him to counter the, that card too. If he plays counters. Which looks like he does, yeah. Which is fine. So I don't think he can win now. Um, actually, he could have Tragic Slip. It's very possible. Yeah, so I think I needed... I don't think I needed to, but I think it would have been better to draw Rancor. Hmm. So yeah, with as much as he can kill my stuff, I think it's better to just have another Lone Missionary. <coughs> I know that that's not what they're my sideboard for. They're my sideboard for like the burn early game. And just to make sure I get to where I can armadillo cloak, but I think just having two ones that can beat in might be enough to kill him. It might be even good enough to play with, I think, Cathedral Sanctifier instead, because I think it's a 1 3. You gain 3 life. There's a card like that, I don't remember what it's called. <laughs> While we're waiting. Uh, Cathedral Sanctifier. Maybe it's a 1-1 one, one that gains you 3 life. There's a 1-3 that gains you life. I know that. Yeah, that's the 1-1. One, one. That's from Madison. I could play that guy. Um, but I want it to be the 1-3 instead. Alright, back to the game. So we have... Three creatures and a Rancor. I think we keep this. Because on turn three we can Pilgrim. Or we can do whatever we feel is necessary. I think we Young Wolf and then we Rancor. Just so we don't get blown out by Shrivel. Yeah, so I think... This would be a good time to actually have Terramorphic Expanse in our deck. The one time that would probably be good. So he probably boards in Crip Rats back. Um, but we can't afford to play around it. So he might have Edict. He could just have Negate. He would shrivel in response versus negating it, I would assume. Okay. So he has more sack effects, which is kind of crappy for us. One second. I think that's just the wind. Okay, so I'd play Lone Missionary, and in response he would play... So now we're, this would be a straight one for one with Shrivel. We could have played Pilgrim too. Mana Leak, that's fine. I think this way is better because next turn let's just go Boggle Pilgrim. I think we might lose this game strictly because it's going to be going by really slow, but... There's a chance that we win, right? <laughs> so 
So here. Oh, you can have victim of the night. I think we go to combat first. Maybe there's another, maybe there's the, uh, Loyal Cathar. Maybe we could play him. Mentally. So I think we just pay for that one. Yeah. What I thought, at least. Okay, so apparently we won that game. I really thought we were gonna lose because of how slow it was going. But anyways, it's good to be back, guys. Uh, please comment, rate, subscribe. Tell me what you guys want to see. I've been kind of checking out prices for decks on Moto. So, like, I got... This is... You can't even read this, can you? No, you can't. Okay. So, this is, like, Modern Eggs. And then I've got, like, Mono Black Devotion and stuff. But, like, I've just been checking out prices, seeing what, if I could afford to play anything else for you guys. Um, I definitely didn't forget about this. I've just been kind of busy. And it, it's a lot of fun. It really is. If you guys have the chance, if you guys have a computer in Moto, whatever, get open broadcast software. It's free. That's what I record my stuff on. And, you know, it's just it's a lot of fun. Uh, have a great day. I Hopefully we'll see you guys soon. But that's to be decided by school. <laughs> Later.